Jeremy with Northwest Home Automation. Um, I see a lot of questions on the different uh, Facebook forums and different things like that about which service is going to be best for me for internet. So I'm doing the legwork. I've got three services at my house currently. Um, I was running on Xfinity for a while, but then Fiber became available through Ziply. So I signed up for that because I've had it in the past and actually prefer that service. Uh, I also have T-Mobile as a backup. Um, and I'm going to kind of give you the pros and cons of each. Uh, I'm just showing you here through speed test. You know, overall, your internet experience is going to depend mainly on your hardware. So if you have a large house and you're trying to cover it with just the Comcast router or just the T-Mobile router, you're going to have a bad experience. So I'll cover that in a later video, but I will, uh, for now, just kind of show you the results that I've been getting. So I went through, did a couple runs on each of the providers. Um, you can see here that I've got uh, T-Mobile at the top as provider. So what I'm getting with T-Mobile, I have a very good signal. Um, the router is placed in a window in the direction of the nearest tower. That is going to give me the best performance speed-wise, and I have the router hardware to this computer. So let me go through the results here. So with T-Mobile, what you're getting is you're getting, I'm getting about 250 down, 50, 60 up. Um, the biggest thing that you're going to notice and why I didn't use as my primary is the latency. Um, we have, you know, several young kids do online gaming. We do homeschool, so we're always streaming stuff online. Um, there's seven people in the house, so it's a high demand network. Um, so this ping time of 40 milliseconds, that makes a huge difference when you're gaming. Uh, and then with Comcast, you jump down to, you know, 17, I got an 11 here. Um, but fiber, I'm consistently, I got two, three, four. Um, the biggest thing you're going to get, like I said, is with fiber is improved latency, and you also get symmetrical up speed, upload speeds. Uh, so with this video, uh, I actually found out something new. Comcast did a big speed increase uh, to their upload speeds. So this is brand new. Uh, a week ago, I was getting... 23 uh, up. So on this plan here, um, I'm actually on the speed uh, speed internet plan. I'm not on their gigabit plan. So or super fast is what I'm on, uh, which when I signed up was 600 megabits. And the reason I chose that is this little page here that I found. So if you look at the plans, the 600 meg. That's the first one to get the faster upload speeds, but it also had a lower latency. So that was kind of the sweet spot I picked to save some money um, and get the faster speeds. But now, as of today, I don't know exactly when it launched, but when I ran the speed test today, my uploads went from 23 to 120, 117. So they've quadrupled their upload speeds to compete with fiber in the area. Um, you can see the download speeds are you know pretty good, but I you know the thing with download and testing is I have my fiber on a live network where these ones are isolated. So this is going to be the peak performance for one device. Where my fiber, this is what I'm getting on a loaded network. So it's very consistent. Um, and, you know, like I said, that's, you don't have to be on the gigabit plan either. I'm on the gigabit plan just because it's, like I said, we have seven people in the house um, and it's very high demand. But for the longest time, I was actually on their 50-50 plan. That was back when, before gigabit, um, and this was, you know, $40 a month back then, which these go up in price. But the 200, 200 would be a good plan for most households. Um, 
the gigabit, I said this goes up to 80 after my contract. So just be aware of that. $80 a month after your contract is up. Uh, I own my own equipment, so I don't have any of these lease fees and things like that. Uh, the other thing to remember with fiber is it is fiber to the side of the house, and then you need to convert it to Cat5, Cat6. Um, there are adapters to use over the coax lines, but those add latency as well. Uh, I have a customer that um, was using that, and when we swapped it, they, we noticed an increase in speeds from using the Mocha adapters to uh, and the increase in uh, the, the decrease in latency. So they got faster uh, both latency and download speeds when we remove those Mocha devices. So they're a good stopgap solution, but Ethernet is going to be the best way to get the maximum performance. So in my house, I'm actually wired with Ethernet, uh, and my router lives in my garage um, right next to ONT, and then it branches out to like my access point, which is sitting over here in my media room office area. But yeah, and then as far as other plan considerations, um, we've got T-Mobile. They don't have data caps. Xfinity or Ziply doesn't have data caps. Xfinity, you have to pay extra to get no data caps. So the plan I'm on now was $60 for a two-year contract, and that included hardware, and, or sorry, so $60, $60 for two years, no contract, but it includes um, hardware for those two years and no data caps for those two years. So once those two years are up, my price was going to go up if, if I wanted to have no data caps, which I need in my household. So that's something everybody has to consider. But just so you know, that's... Uh, kind of the different options and I'll, I'll lay it out a little bit as, a, as far as paperwork goes but as far as this video goes I just wanted to just do a quick comparison of the different plans for you and show you my personal results here between all three services. Uh, I hope this is helpful in making your decisions and look for future videos on other ways to improve your home network and your home experience. Thanks, this is Jeremy with Northwest Home Automation.